So for the activity that you guys are going to do, you guys are going to have a lake of goldfish in the middle of the classroom. That's going to contain half of orange goldfish and half of pretzel goldfish. What you do is you take your plates that you guys have and you go and randomly select 10 goldfish from the lake. Make sure that it's completely random. You guys aren't allowed to look at the goldfish that you guys are choosing. Now that you guys have the 10 goldfish, you guys are gonna separate them between the, the pretzels and the orange. And then you write down the number of orange and pretzel goldfish on your data sheet. So right here, you have four orange goldfish and six pretzel goldfish. Now with those numbers, you're gonna have a, p your p-value is the number of the dominant allele, which is the orange out of the whole entire population. So it's gonna be four out of 10. So your p-value is gonna be 0 0.4. Your Q is going to be the proportion of the pretzel out of the 10. So then it's going to be 0 0.6. Your P squared is just going to be your P value squared. So it's going to be 0 0.16. Your 2PQ is going to be your P value times your Q value times 2, which is going to be 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 is 0 0.24 times 2 is 0.48. Your Q squared is your Q value squared, which is 0.6 times 0.6, which is 0 0.36. Now, that's going to be your first data, the data for your first generation. Now, you're going to, what you do next is you're going to randomly eat three of your goldfish. Um, Mr. Ramirez is going to eat three of the goldfish of the population of 10. Then make sure that it's completely random. Now that you've eaten those, you're gonna go back to your lake of goldfish and randomly choose three more goldfish. Again, make sure that it's completely random. Now you have another population of 10 and you're gonna do the same numbers again. But now you have five gold, goldfish or orange goldfish and five pretzel goldfish. So that's gonna be your numbers here. And then you're gonna follow, you're gonna do the same things over here. You're gonna keep doing the same ones. Now for the the second table with natural selection, when you do that, what the you're gonna eat the goldfish that are the pretzel goldfish. So now Miss Ramirez is going to eat three pretzel goldfish. And then once you do that, then you're going to go back to the lake and you're going to randomly select three goldfish again. And now you're going to do the numbers for that one. So in this case, you have seven orange goldfish and three pretzel goldfish. And then you're going to fill out the same things for P, Q, P squared, 2PQ, and Q squared. So the only time that you're choosing the goldfish that you eat is in natural selection. All the rest of the times you have to make sure that it's completely random. So at the beginning of class, we had passed out these student data sheets. I'm gonna need you to go ahead and bring these out now. We're gonna do a little activity, but before we do that, we're going to ex uh, further explain the formula once again. So P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared is equal to 1, where P is equal to the frequency of dominant alleles. These are going to be the orange goldfish. Q is equal to the frequency of recessive alleles. These are going to be your pretzels. P squared is equal to the frequency of individuals that are homozygous dominant. 2PQ is equal to the frequency of individuals who are heterozygous. And Q squared is equal to the frequency of individuals who are homozygous recessive. So here we did a sample thing with the populations with the five, we did five generations and we filled in the table when it's the table, table one with no natural selection. So that means it's, everything's completely random. Um, you're not choosing which ones you're eating and you're going to randomly eat three of them and then randomly select three from the pool. And so when you do that, you're going to get the five generations. 
and the numbers that you're going to get are supposed to be relatively constant throughout the five generations. So it's going to be four six five five four six five five six four. That's what the numbers that we got for number of orange goldfish, number of pretzel goldfish. Um, so let's say for example, if you have a, a population of a thousand with your two PQ values, it would be approximately forty eight percent of the thousand would be heterozygous, um, and then down five generations later, you're going to get the same number, 48% of the thousand would be heterozygous. Here, 36% would be the homozygous recessive for the pretzel color, and then five generations later would be 16% of the thousand would be the same thing, the pretzel color, because they're homozygous recessive. So it's kind of a bit a different, it's kind of different, but it stays relatively similar. Three, two, one. So now we're gonna look at table number two, and table number two is with natural selection. With natural selection, we are selecting against the pretzel goldfish, which are gonna be your recessive genes, and we're gonna favor your orange goldfish, which are gonna be your dominant genes. So after five generations, these are the numbers that we accumulated. So if you've noticed, going from generation one to generation five, the numbers steadily begin to increase for your dominant genes, which are gonna be your orange goldfish. And as for your pretzels, they slowly begin to decrease. These are gonna be your recessive genes again. So we look at our heterozygotes over here, we also notice that steadily they begin to decrease because we are going to be selecting for your dominant genes, which are your orange goldfish. So now that we've done a simulated exercise and you got to see what the values look like for table one and table two, now it's your turn to uh, perform the goldfish activity. You should get numbers that are relatively similar to what we've gotten in table one and table two. Have fun and enjoy eating the goldfish at the end of it.